hello everyone welcome to cam 9 lab session today we will begin with lab number eight in this lab we will conduct chemical reactions and we will write uh, the equations for those reactions and we will also balance those equations as usual the experimental uh, procedure and other instructions are given in the first tab here if you click on it you will uh, get the uh, PDF file for uh, which has all the instructions and procedure so let's take a look at uh, the experimental procedure so this is the experimental procedure for this file uh, for this experiment and uh, you can uh, scroll through it please read all the instructions please go through this uh, experimental procedure before attempting the lab report there are a couple of uh, videos available here these videos uh, will help you to understand uh, different types of chemical reactions and the second video will uh, also uh, uh, give you the instructions about balancing the chemical equation the lab report is given in the final tab so let's briefly review what this uh, experiment is all about. So in this experiment, we will see what are chemical reactions and we will write equations to express those reactions. In last week's lab, we learned about physical change as well as chemical change. Now, physical changes are those which alter the appearance of a substance but not it, uh, its identity or composition. For example, if we have a piece of ice, let's say we have ice cube, and we heat this ice cube, uh, a cube and it will melt and it will become water. Now, in this process, if we take a closer look we will see that ice is made up of uh, water molecules so it's made up of h2o molecules and they are packed tightly with each other that's why it's a solid but when we heat this up we just break that solid packing of h2o molecules so the formula of water molecule still stays h2o so nothing happens to the identity or composition the composition was h2o before this change and it still remains h2o after this change so this kind of a change in which the appearance may change but the chemical composition does not change so this kind of change is known as a physical change in today's lab we're not gonna see any of these so in today's lab we will see chemical changes now chemical changes are also known as chemical reactions so it's the same thing chemical reaction chemical change are uh, the same thing now a chemical change occurs when a substance transforms into a new substance or a different substance okay uh, for example if we combine hydrogen gas with oxygen gas and we let them react or mix uh, then what's going to happen is after a while if this represents the hydrogen gas molecule and the blue represents uh, the water gas molecules and they react with each other they combine with each other eventually they will give us a water molecule so in water molecule we know that water is made up of one uh, oxygen and two hydrogen atoms right so water molecule is a new substance it did not existed before so therefore the combination of hydrogen and oxygen giving us water is an example of a chemical change or a chemical reaction so in a chemical reaction always a new substance will form
So how to identify a chemical change? One thing is that look for the new substance. But the problem is all these molecules are so tiny, we cannot see them with our own eyes. So what we uh, look for is we look for some other evidences of a chemical reaction. So what are these evidences? So first evidence is uh, formation of gas. So imagine you took a test tube, you mixed uh, two substances, one is liquid, the other one is solid or both of them are liquid um, and suddenly you see some gases coming out, some bubbles or some gas. So this is an evidence. So this is known as formation of a gas or gas evolution. So whenever we mix two substances and suddenly there are fumes, there are bubbles, there are gas, that is an evidence of a chemical reaction. Secondly, in a chemical reaction, we may see formation of a solid. For example, you mixed uh, two liquids with each other. So maybe one is blue, the other one is colorless, doesn't matter. So we mix two liquids and suddenly you see something solid sitting here after a while. This solid doesn't have to be a big chunk of a solid, it could be powder also. Powder is also classified as a solid. So powder is known as precipitate. Either you may see crystals, crystals are a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, bigger solid particles, but, but the powder is known as precipitate. Either one of those is uh, an evidence of a, a chemical reaction. So whenever we see a solid formed uh, in our reaction chamber, then that is an evidence of a chemical reaction. Another evidence is change in color. Imagine we are mixing, mixing means with their reacting, right? So we are mixing two colorless liquids and suddenly there is a blue color. So that would mean that something new has formed, which, whose color is blue. So color change is an evidence of a chemical reaction. One of the famous example of color change is uh, fireworks in mean, 4th of July, where fireworks, they display different colors because that's a chemical reaction taking place. And another evidence is uh, heat change. Heat change means the, either the heat evolves, uh, the reaction chamber be may become hot or it may get absorbed also, it may become cold also. For example, in our oven when we uh, burn something, that is a chemical reaction and the evidence is that heat is coming out. Okay, so these are the evidences which we which will confirm or which will indicate that a chemical reaction is taking place. So once we know that a chemical reaction has occurred, we express that chemical reaction in form of an equation. Now equation is written such a way that the reactants are written on the left hand side and then the products are written on right hand side and in the middle there is arrow. Remember it is arrow not equal sign because that would be wrong. Reactants are not equal to products. Reactants are giving us product. For example, if uh, uh, we combine sodium metal with a chlorine gas, if we let them mix with each other, we will see a white powder. So sodium is a metal, shiny metal, chlorine is a gas, so if we put them together, so chlorine is a yellowish color gas. So if we put the sodium metal and chlorine gas together, after a while you will see a white powder and that white powder I'm, I'm making it green but it's white powder. That white powder is sodium chloride. 
so sodium chloride is our product and our reactants are sodium and chlorine gas so this is a uh, uh, this is how we write a chemical equation there are few other things which uh, we indicate in chemical equation for example uh, we always show the plus sign which separates uh, reactants in this case we have two reactants and only one product in some other reactions we may have multiple products and we will put a plus sign and some other product if we have it if a reaction needs heating we show a little triangle on um, the arrow uh, this triangle means that the reaction was uh, uh, heated uh, or the reaction chamber was heated to initiate the reaction we also use subscripts to indicate the state of the matter for example we put s to show that this thing is solid s for solid and g for gas and of course l for liquid uh, none of our substances are liquid so i'm not gonna use it and if a substance is soluble in water then we use aq aq stands for aqueous which means uh, uh, that our substance is soluble in water okay so <clears throat> so once we know that a chemical reaction is taking place we know the evidence we wrote the equation then the final step is balancing the equation now what's the meaning of balancing the equation balancing means that the number of atoms before the reaction should be same as after the reaction so let me explain with the help of an example let's pay attention to the uh, to the reaction which i wrote here on the reactant side you will see that we have only one sodium atom and we have two chlorine atoms cl2 means two cl atoms right in the product side we have only one sodium and one chlorine so this means that we have one missing chlorine atom what happened to the second chlorine according to law of conservation of mass uh, the mass is conserved it means we cannot lose or gain any atom so when that happens we call this equation is not balanced so balance equation means that we account for all the atoms so in order to balance an equation what we do is we use uh, uh, coefficients which will uh, balance the number of atoms for example in this case uh, we need uh, two chlorine so coefficients are numbers which are written in front of the substance formula now this number will be multiplied to the entire formula uh, okay so two means two sodium and two times chlorine so in this case we get two times sodium and two times chlorine so now we have two chlorines here two chlorines here so chlorine is ba balanced but we have two sodiums and only one sodium here so then what we will do is we'll put two here okay so we can put any coefficient but we usually uh, not usually we should start with the lowest number and as long as it balances the equation we are good to go there are few tricks to balance the equation which we learned uh, which we already learned in the theory uh, portion of uh, uh, this course but i'll go over it briefly one more time let's take an example of a reaction in which this is a propane gas the one which is available in uh, those gas cylinders we use uh, uh, for combustion uh, this propane gas when it burns or when it combusts in combustion process propane combines with oxygen and it gives us 
products are carbon dioxide gas and water so these are two products and these are two reactants okay so when you want to balance it so always balance one element at a time so pick a molecule which is uh, the largest in size balance that one first and if you see an element all by itself or if you see a molecule in elemental stage elemental stage means that it contains atoms of only one atom then leave that till the end so balance that um, molecule at the end so as you can see oxygen is all by itself so we will balance oxygen at the end so leave it till the end that's the trick so start with the biggest one so biggest one is propane that molecule looks the biggest and within the biggest molecule balance one element at a time so first we will balance carbon so in the reactant side we have three carbons right because this three means we have three carbons and in the product side we have only one carbon because there's nothing nothing means one so in the product side we also make uh, need to make it three so therefore we need to multiply it with three so now carbons are three in the reactant side carbons are three in the product side so they are balanced now <clears throat> next is hydrogen in propane let's balance hydrogen so in reactant side we have eight hydrogens and in the product side we have only two hydrogens in order to make this hydrogen eight we need to multiply this with four so four times two is eight right so therefore hydrogens in the product side is eight hydrogens in the reactant side also eight so balanced now we balance the carbons we balance the hydrogens only thing left is oxygen so oxygen in the reactant side is uh, two so two oxygens and in product side so three times two so three times two six oxygens here and four times one four oxygens here so total oxygens are six and four together ten oxygen okay and in reactant side only two so we need to make this also ten so therefore we will multiply this with five so now oxygens will be ten here five times two is ten and 10 here so let me just write one more time cleanly so balance equation is c3h8 no coefficient and then we have 5 times o2 and 3 times co2 plus uh, 4 times h2o so this is our balance equation and that's all the information you need for completing uh, this week's lab in this week's lab we will conduct uh, seven reactions seven different reactions either a video of that reaction or a picture representation of a reaction will be given from the video or the picture you will need to first find the evidence of the reaction remember evidence is either gas formation or a solid formation or color change or a heat one of four evidences note down the evidence because you're gonna need to write it down in the lab report and then you need to balance the equation once you balance it and finally you need to classify what type of reaction is it so what's the meaning of uh, classification of type of reaction okay. so let's go over what's uh, the type of reactions so you will need to look at the reactants and the products and when you compare the equation or reactants and products you will see they will fit in one of uh, the following five categories so first 
type is there are five different types so first type is when a reactant a combines with reactant b and we get a b so this kind of reaction is known as synthesis reaction for example sodium plus cl2 gives us nacl right so this would be example of synthesis reaction second type is when we have a reaction type a b and it breaks down into a plus b so this kind of reaction is known as decomposition reaction because they are decomposing third type is that we have a plus b c and in the product we get a c plus b if you think about it a has kicked out the b and replaced the b so this kind of reaction is known as single replacement because a has replaced b that's why it's called single replacement fourth kind of reaction is when we have a b reactant and another one is let's say c d and in the product we get a d plus c b so now there are two replacements have um, uh, taken place so therefore this is known as a double replacement and finally the last uh, kind of reaction is so this is any uh, reaction so substance a with oxygen so there will be one of the reactant will be oxygen and there will be fire also involved you will see heat and fire uh, in the reaction and you will see some combination of uh, the reactant with oxygen so this kind of reaction is known as combustion so combustion reaction is essentially burning of any fuel or an, any material that's a combustion reaction so in today's lab we have seven different reactions and in all of those seven reactions will fit into one of uh, this category so if in the lab report you need to find the evidence of the reaction you need to balance the equation and you need to find what type of reaction is this okay so let's uh, take a brief look at the lab report and we'll see how to conduct the experiment so as i mentioned earlier that there are seven different type of reactions the first reaction is the reaction of magnesium and oxygen and in this reaction magnesium is a metal oxygen and is a gas and this is the video of the reaction so click on the video this video will show you what happens when magnesium and oxygen combines look for the evidence okay and you need to first make sure that this indeed is a chemical reaction so one of the evidence the evidence is color change or heat evolved or a solid formation or um, uh, the gas formation or bubbles look for one of the evidence and <clears throat> first you need to write a, a reactant appearance here what it looks like magnesium what it looks like and then you need to write the evidence of the reaction here and this equation is already given all you need to do is you need to write the coefficient numbers to balance it for example if you feel like it's gonna be two here so write two here and uh, see if I put two here now there are two magnesium so in order to balance this I need to put two here so I'll I'll let you think about it I'll let you figure it out so so put the appropriate coefficients here to balance it and then finally the type of reaction and the first reaction type I'll help you out so here if you see this is a plus b is giving us a b so a plus b equals a b that type of reaction is synthesis other reaction you have to find by yourself but they will fit in one of those five categories 
in second reaction we are reacting a zinc metal with copper 2 sulfate so the copper 2 sulfate is this blue liquid solution and the zinc metal is this shiny piece of metal so before the reaction look their appearance okay and after the reaction after 30 minutes it's on the right hand side do you see anything new here if you see something new here that indicates that a chemical reaction has taken place look for that evidence put the evidence here right you need to write the appearance of uh, copper sulfate remember the blue solution is copper sulfate and zinc is that metal rod and then after 30 minutes how the appearance has changed and then this is the equation you need to balance it and then the type of the reaction similarly this uh, in reaction number three uh, we are reacting a magnesium metal that's the spring inside that's the magnesium metal and the liquid is hydrochloric acid so in the beginning that's what it looks like after a few minutes this is uh, the appearance uh, okay so look for those tiny okay these are bubbles okay so you know what bubbles are look for the chemical uh, reaction evidences and bubbles are one of the evidence so that's your evidence again uh, metal appearance write down whatever you feel like it's a shiny solid uh, write the appearance and then the evidence balance the equation and then write what type of reaction is this similarly there is a reaction between lead to nitrate and potassium iodide uh, okay so this is what happens here so remember uh, both lead to nitrate is a colorless as well as a potassium iodide is also colorless but you see this yellow greenish thing where did it, this come from right so that's something new and you know what kind of uh, evidence is this so write down that and then complete this uh, section similarly again we are mixing a colorless uh, liquid here and uh, pale yellow liquid and we have something blood red powderish formation so that's an evidence of a reaction based on that evidence complete this lab report here balance the equation finally we have reaction of uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate this is also known as bicarbonate it's same as baking powder and then hydrochloric acid uh, there's a video uh, watch the video it will show you what happens when you mix sodium bicarbonate with hydrogen chloride look for the evidences and then complete this equation and the last reaction is the reaction of hydrogen peroxide you already can see bubbles and bubbles are evidence of the reaction and then write down the appearance of reactant hydrogen peroxide it's a colorless liquid and then evidence of reaction you can say it's bubbles and then equation is here balance it and type of reaction you can see it's a b breaking down into a and b so it's a decomposition once you complete that hit submit and we are done with this experiment if you have any question please contact me send me an email and i'll be uh, glad to help you out.